and welcome once again to the weekly Professor Mop Top update. I, of course, am Professor Mop Top. You are the lucky um, viewer who's going to be updated. This week, we're going to talk about two songs. You're going to get three hunks of very cool audio in your email. The first song is called Wild Honey Pie, not to be confused with Honey Pie, also on the White Album. Now, Wild Honey, as well as Honey Pie, were both written in India, Wild Honey Pie is just the same lyric repeated again and again and again and again. Now, while they were in India, they spent a lot of time sitting around in circles playing their acoustic guitars. Mike Love of the Beach Boys was there, and they recently had a song called Wild Honey from the Wild Honey album. Paul McCartney likely had Wild Honey on the brain when he was writing some of these songs. Now, Wild Honey Pie was created, and then uh, they... Um, brought it back to England, and although Paul didn't demo it, he didn't forget it. As we've said a lot of times before, Paul McCartney never really forgot many good ideas. You could say that about all the Beatles. Rarely did they let a good idea go to waste. Now, while Paul McCartney was waiting for uh, session men to come in to record some stuff on Mother Nature's Son, he had a little bit of free studio time as George and John um, uh, recorded some stuff in another studio. While well, Paul did the drums, the guitars, and sang on Wild Honey Pie. He does everything on it. It was on August 20th of 1968. Now, records are very consistent. You'll hear Professor Moptop talking about some of those inconsistencies in the audio, but Paul plays the guitar and sings, and then he recorded the guitar and sang again, and then he added the bass drum. Now, they weren't going to actually include this on the White Album, Pad, uh, on the White Album but Patty Boyd was a fan, so they decided to keep it in. At 52 seconds, it was the shortest Beatles song to date, of course, that would get beaten eventually. After Wild Honey Pie and before the continuing story of Bungalow Bill, there's that little Spanish guitar. We're going to hear about that a little bit. You'll hear about that in great detail in the audio we sent. The second hunk of audio you're going to hear is about the continuing story of Bungalow Bill. And that's a two-parter because there's so much cool stuff all about that. While in India, there was a group of... Um, celebrities and well-to-do people who are out there learning how to uh, <laughs> how to become better people, even though they had a lot of money. The, they all felt the need to uh, be a little bit more spiritual in their day-to-day -day world. Uh, Richard Cook III was a guy who was there. He was there with his mother, Nancy D. Herrera, who was the, um, uh, she was a press agent for Maharishi. It is a bit funny to think that Maharishi needed a press agent, but this is the 1960s. This is how it goes. Now, Richard Cook III was there. Mia Farrow was also there. And in her book, she calls Rick a bit uh, um, just uninteresting. She thought that Nancy was there and she was kind of, you know, a little bit, you know, stuck up, a little bit snotty to the other people. Rick, however, thought that John Lennon was aloof. Well, one day Rick and his mom, Nancy, who may or may not be the Nancy from um, Rocky Raccoon, went tiger hunting. They might have gone on a safari. There's all kinds of questionable details about this story. When they returned to the ashram, they told Maharishi all about what happened, and they said that they had uh, killed a tiger, and they were actually very excited about it. Maharishi was very, very upset about that, bordering on being actually angry about it, and he gave them a lecture all about nature and beauty and respecting the land. Now, John and Paul got to uh, see this. They were sitting there talking with Maharishi, when Richard Cook III came, and when Maharishi told them all about this. Now, Cook did uh, feel guilt about it, and he vowed to never kill again. By the time the song was released, he had no idea that the Beatles wrote a song about him, and he started getting postcards from people saying, uh, congratulations, Bungalow Bill, you did it. And some of his friends thought that it was a very cool thing to have a Beatles song written about him, even though in the song he's not especially... Uh, painted in a flattering light. His mother did not agree. She thought that it was rather insulting uh, in song, and it might be. When we look in uh, history, Prudence Farrow got to have a beautiful love song written about her by the Beatles, and Richard Cook III got to be the guy who killed an animal. Now, Captain Marvel is mentioned in the song, as is the word zap. John kind of combined Buffalo Bill and Jungle Jim to get Bungalow Bill. They were also sleeping in bungalows at the time. When they recorded the song, something unique happens in that Yoko Ono sings a solo line. It is the first time that anyone other than the four Beatles sang solo on any of the songs. The background vocals 
uh, include a cast of characters uh, such as George Martin, Mal Evans, Maureen Starkey, uh, Patty Harrison was there, and uh, Ken Scott, who was one of the engineers. The Mellotron that is played at the end is played by Chris Thomas, who was one of the assistants to George Martin at the time. And during the White Album, a lot of the times uh, George Martin would actually leave and leave Chris Thomas basically in charge to keep an eye on the Beatles to make sure that they got something done and didn't cause any trouble. Now that Spanish guitar in between the two songs that we're talking about today is actually a preset from the Mellotron. You'll hear some great detailed stuff all about this in your emails. As always, don't forget to check your email, don't forget to be a good person, and don't forget to love Professor Moptop, which apparently several of you already do. Thank you for another thrilling week. I'll talk to you again in seven. That's me. I'm Professor Moptop.